So uh, there I was. I, I, I was in one of the poorest and, and one of the remotest areas in northern Uttar Pradesh, in a rural area in, in um, northern India, um, a, a small half-built uh, temple um, with a Sri Lankan monk, Venerable Sangharatana, and I, I liked him. In the morning he took me across the road into the ancient ruins and uh, told me that this is where the Buddha did this, this is where the Buddha did that. It was just enchanting because there was early in the morning there were peacocks, a peacock and her, his mate sort of walking through the mist and the trees and there were langua monkeys and it was really lovely. And knowing that it was actually a place where the Buddha had spent uh, some 20 years of his life really inspired me. So I ended up stay, staying there for about two weeks. But uh, uh, still I hadn't decided whether I should be ordained there. Uh, but certainly that thought occurred to me. So after about two weeks I left and then I returned to where I had been staying in uh, Sarnath. And then I visited some other places, and so I got to know quite a few interesting people and visited quite a lot of places. But eventually I decided I'm going to go back to Sravasti and, uh, and become a monk. So I, I went back and then I spent several months there, when, uh, during which time Venerable Sangharatana taught me the preliminaries of Pali, uh, what ordination involved, etc., etc., etc. And um, one day he uh, said to me, okay, uh, tomorrow several other monks are going to arrive and um, I'm going to ordain you or I'm going to uh, accept you as a samanera. Are you ready? And this came as a bit of a surprise to me and I said, yes, yes I am. Um, and indeed, several people did arrive. I can't remember the name of some of them, but one of them was Venerable Chandaratana, once again a Sri Lankan. He was a professor of uh, Pali and Sanskrit at Lucknow University. Once again, we remained friends for many years. And um, what happened was um, early in the morning, uh, those monks arrived. We had breakfast together, and then we all went out to the what was known as the Ananda Bodhi tree in the ruins of uh, Jetawana. And um, I'd already shaved my head and we under, uh, under, underwent the ceremony and I became a, a, a novice, a novice Buddhist monk. And um, that was that. And it was, uh, as I took off my lay clothes, I sort of felt as if something unwanted was sort of falling away from me. And then as I put on for the first time, rather uncomfortably, <laughs> my robe, I felt like I had, I felt like I had come home. It was a, a, an aspiration that I'd had, had for quite a few years. And I had undergone continual frustrations where it nearly happened, but in the end didn't and now it actually had happened. I had taken the first step in, uh, in uh, becoming a member of the, the Buddha's Sangha and I felt absolutely wonderful. And um, we all sat together under the Ananda Bodhi tree for some time. We chanted some suttas. Uh, I already knew the um, Metta Sutra. I'd learnt the Metta Sutra by that time. And then um, Everybody else, Venerable Sangharatana and the, the presiding monks, we all walked back to, to the temple. Now, it happened to be um, during the rainy season. And that part of the country is very low and very soggy in the rainy season. There's water all over the place, large bodies of water everywhere. And uh, as we were walking back, we passed... Uh, an area where there was a great deal of water and just a little from the bank where the path was, was a lotus growing. 
and I'd seen lotuses before, but only from a distance, out in the middle of the pond or over there. And this was the first one I'd seen close up. And it was so beautiful, and it seemed to be an auspicious day for me. So I decided I'm going to get that lotus. So I stopped there and assessed how far it was from the bank of the, uh, the, the puddle. Well, that's what it was. It was a large puddle that I could get that lotus. And Venerable Sangharatana looked back and said to me, what are you doing? And I said, I'm just going to get that lotus. And he said, well, be careful. And he and off the, they went back into the, uh, the, the temple. And so I, I calculated that if I put my foot here and the second foot there, I'd be able to reach it. Seemed easy enough. I put my foot there and I sunk almost up to my chest in <laughs> mud. It, uh, so I didn't have to lean down to get the, the, the lotus. I had to sort of look up. So I picked the thing and I got out and I was, my brand new robe was covered with water and uh, water plants and mud. I, I looked awful and I felt very bad. So I walked back to the temple with my lotus. <coughs> and when Venerable Sangharatana saw the state I was in, he was, he was not pleased. He was actually quite annoyed. And then he gave me... <laughs> My first lesson as a, as a monk, and he said, why did you have to pick that flower? Now that you've picked it, now that you possess it, in, a, in an hour or two it's going to be limp and die. If you'd have left it where it was, you could have enjoyed it tomorrow and the next day. And other people walking past could have enjoyed it too. But because you wanted to own it, you have in a sense destroyed it. Now go and clean yourselves up and, and etc. And I felt really very, I felt really <laughs> very bad. But that was my first lesson as a, as a Buddhist monk, as a novice.